This week, we ask, is this aviation heaven or hell? Should we be getting excited about this sort of thing? And don't look to India for a job, unless you're Indian. But first, a big hello if you're a reader of GA Europe magazine. Welcome along if this is your first time with us. Now, Cessna say the Skycatcher should be ready by the end of next year. The Skycatcher. We just can't get excited about it at fullflap.tv. Can you? I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, is there? It's got Cessna's name. You can be pretty confident it'll do everything it says on the package. 180 knots, just under 900 feet per minute climb, and a range of 540 miles. They've even made the price reasonable, even though it's not the cheapest LSA around at 112,000 US. But what we don't like about it is the fact that people will just buy it for the name, meaning that all those other stunning LSAs, like the Flight Design CT and the Sport Cruiser, which might perform much better for less money, could get knocked back. We're also a bit suspicious about the fuel consumption. Where is it? We couldn't find anything on Cessna's website. It's also not the prettiest aircraft, is it? Perhaps it's not surprising that the 400 is on the front of Cessna's website. Saying with the Cessna brand, and the firm are another of the aircraft manufacturers hoping to get you signed up from cradle to the grave. They've announced the excitingly titled Next Generation Flight Training Programme, which funnily enough means flying the 162 first, then moving on to the 170 Skyhawk. But is that really progression? The 162 is new, but the 172 certainly isn't. It may be the truck of the skies, a reliable load-carrying workhorse, but it drinks fuel like it has hole in the tanks. Talking of initiatives, if your mate says, how do you fancy buying a diamond like mine? Don't be surprised. The firm say they'll give you $10,000 if you can persuade a friend to buy one of their aircraft. If you're a military pilot, then you're probably familiar with things like night vision and infrared. Well, for most private flyers, this is just beginning to become a reality. Cirrus have announced a new enhanced vision system for the SR-20 and SR-22. The setup, which will set you back $15,000, will use the existing glass panel display to give you a better view of what's going on outside. Jobs news and great news if you're watching in India. Not so much so if you come from anywhere else. If you didn't know, aviation is expanding really fast in India and many people are getting bitten by the bug and training for airline jobs. Jet Airways currently employs around 240 expat pilots, but 100 are expected to be told to oh, go away to be replaced by Indian nationals. So if you live in India, that may sound great, but the word is they're doing it as a cost-cutting measure, so it's hard to know what the final package will be. Talking of jobs, would you put your money into a flying career right now? Well, we've been asking that on the fullflap.tv embedded player. At the Fly Professional Flight Training Show, people said now it's a bad time to get a job, but things will bounce back by 2010. 57% of you agree with them, but still a staggering 43% don't. By the way, we're also taking your thoughts on this show, and we are listening, so click away. Now, if asking you to think there put you under a bit of pressure, then let's relax. You know what it's like. You turn up at the airport in your limo, and then get in your private jet for the trip back to the mountain hideaway retreat, you're going to be stressed, aren't you? Well, while the guy up front is getting on with flying the jet, in the back you'll be getting a nice massage. Oh, and perhaps a manicure, or even a facial. It's got to be the way to fly. In all seriousness though, BizJet travel is highly competitive, and just like the way we love our cars to have a few extras on them, this firm, London Executive Aviation, thinks onboard spa treatments should do the trick for them. And it'll all be complimentary. I'm off to the Caribbean in a couple of weeks, and I suspect I'll be getting a complimentary rubbery egg sandwich in economy class. We've said it before, and you may be more suitable for a military job today if you have the flight sim skills instead of the right stuff. In fact, according to the Associated Press, the US Air Force plans to employ more than a thousand people just to operate UAVs. There'll be no need to go through the usual rigorous physical checks. Just think, a flight sim where you get to drop real bombs. The flying car is back. Well, nearly. We told you about the flying Ferrari from Moller recently, but how about this? It's called the Terrafugia. According to various reports, the aircraft, or is it a car, has been getting some road tests and now looks set to get airborne for the first time in December. If it all works out, the price tag will be about $194,000 and it should be in the showroom by 2010. Don't expect to peep the kids at the traffic lights in their Subaru, though. It won't be fast since it uses the same 100 horsepower Rotax in flight as it does on the ground. In fact, the word is it'll only reach about 40 miles per hour on the road. However, we do love innovation like this, especially because it appears to be actually happening. Coming up next, Rick takes us for a flight in aviation heaven. What is it, hell? 
As a pilot, you know how important eyesight is. It might be for reading your charts, spotting aircraft at a distance, or simply judging how close you are to the ground. Aviation Optical provides the eye examination that an aviator actually needs. We'll check the health of your eyes and make sure your view from the cockpit stays crystal clear. Why waste money on the high street when you can actually fly into an optician that understands what you need? Aviation Optical and Medical, the only choice for aviators. This is San Diego, possibly the driest, sunniest place on Earth, and possibly the best place on the Earth for aviation. It's pleasantly warm, 21 degrees Celsius or 71 Fahrenheit is the average for August. In the summer months it rarely rains, the average rainfall is just 2 millimetres, that's 90 times less than Berlin and 280 times less than London. I suppose the only place drier would be the Sahara Desert, but you might struggle to find Afghans there. Unless you ask the guy on the camel very nicely. A question for you, how much do you pay for Avgas? Currently it's about 1.9 euros or 1.5 British pounds. In the US you'll pay around 1.19 dollars per litre. Yes, that's 77 pence or 0.93 euros. So it's half the price. The facilities are also amazing. Look at this runway. It may only be the local airfield, but it's four times longer than the Empire State Building is tall and more than double the length of my local airfield. If you can't get off the ground here, then please calmly get out of your plane and burn your license. Pretty much all the airspace is open to us. If you follow your GPS, maybe not over the military bases, but if you want to cross a major international airport like San Diego, just ask the air traffic control. We'll welcome you and simply put the jets above and below you. And it's really quite pretty here too. It's a real shame actually the coastline is destined to slide into the sea in a big earthquake. So it's dry, it's cheap, great facilities with open airspace and great views. What's the catch, I hear you say? Well, there is one, it's this. If you can't see the sky clearly in these pictures, don't worry, because nor can I. This isn't a picture from somewhere else, it is still California. Don't believe me? Here's the world famous sun baked San Diego Zoo. They were selling sun hats, I needed an umbrella. Even the koala decided that sleep was the only option. We were there for two weeks and most of the time it looked like this. Why? Well, how can I explain this in a really simple way? Excuse the sort of kiddie show graphics here. On this side is the desert. That's me there. On this side is the Pacific. In the morning, the desert heats up faster than the sea and so it sucks in all the moisture. So you get a huge blanket of thick mist. Now you would have thought the sun would burn it off and you'd be right, but sometimes it's just so thick it lasts right into the evening. It's not hard to see that it could ruin your flying holiday. It's called June Gloom and May Grey, but knowing what it's called also provides us with the answer. It tends to happen in certain months of the year, but it can also happen in April, when we were there, July and sometimes even September. So you've booked your holiday in one of the other months and you're ready. I want to show you somewhere where us pilots have been going for years. Well, we're doing about 95 knots and it's going to take about half an hour to get there. About 22 miles across the ocean. There's sharks down there as well. And there it is. Catalina is not just another island, but another world. Or so says the island's marketing department. But it might actually be true because most people here drive not cars, but golf cart buggies. How much more Californian can you get than that? You know those flights you make where you know if you did it by anything other than a GA plane it would take forever? You know that feeling of smugglers? Come on, you know it. That everyone else is suffering down below. Well this is one of those trips. You can take your friends to Catalina in a fraction of the time and when you want to travel. They also did a lot here to make that all possible for us. You see, they had a pretty big potential problem. How do you build an airfield on an island covered in sharp pointy mountains? So what they did was got two mountain tops, blew the tops off them and filled in the gap with rocks and then you had your runway. It'll cost $20 to land and from the airport it's a $17 taxi ride to Avalon, the main city. Although there is plenty of good walking right around the island to enjoy. So back to Gillespie Field to sum up. By the way, landing back at Gillespie will cost you nothing, which is obviously cheaper than Europe. And in fact, that's quite normal for the USA. Catalina is a bit of an exception. So California flying couldn't be more perfect, right? 
A couple of niggles. Firstly, you will need to do a few security forms. We used to have, of course, as pilots. You also need to have your fingerprints taken. Secondly, there's a few differences on the radio, but an instructor can explain all that in a few minutes. Thirdly, please don't make the mistakes we made. Avoid the gloom. Make sure you go in the right months. If you do all that, then you'll take your experience of flying to a new level. If general aviation has a hell, it's California in April, May or June, when sitting on the ground in the sunshine state might just make you wish you were back home. But if aviation has a heaven, it's also California. It's like taking aviation to the next level. It's a place where small planes and the people in them, that's you, are loved. It's cheap, it's got open airspace, it has fantastic views, and it's open to all of us. You've been watching Full Flap TV Connect. I'm Vicky Sarah.